when all cities shall have long been dead. And all life shall be on the very verge of extinction on the globe. Then on a bit of lichen shall be seated a tiny insect representing the sole survivor of animal life in this our earth. It could happen. After all, the odds favor the bug over man by at least 500,000 to one. These are the animals that are thriving due to human-caused climate change. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault, and you're watching Animal Logic Second Nature. Climate change is a word we use a lot, but still bears defining. It is the change in average conditions, like precipitation and temperature, in a region over a long period of time. Climate change itself is a natural phenomenon that occurs as the Earth cools and warms over millions of years. The reason that climate change has become such a concern in recent decades is that due to human activity since the Industrial Revolution, our climate is changing way more quickly than it would naturally on its own. This super speedy, human-driven change in average conditions, also known as anthropogenic climate change, threatens to cause a whole host of issues, from flooding to drought to intense heat. If unstopped, it will lead to the mass extinction of thousands of species that aren't well adapted to this new climate in the next century. Not all creatures, however, are feeling the heat. Some, in fact, are thriving in the face of this anthropogenic climate change and are using it to their advantage. This video was made in collaboration with Planet Wild. Stick around to learn more or click here to watch their video about rewilding the European lynx. Many of the creatures benefiting from climate change are those that live near Arctic ecosystems, one of the regions most affected by climate change. When the Yukon is frozen, it is the winter highway. When it breaks up, it is a death trap. The Arctic is warming three times faster than the global average, which threatens ecosystems like the Arctic tundra that are highly sensitive to temperature increases. As the Arctic warms, trees are migrating northward from the forest belt, which is completely changing the landscape of the formerly cold and barren tundra. While the tundra used to be too cold for red foxes, which have long ears and limbs that allow them to lose heat quickly, these warmer temperatures across Europe, Asia, and North America have allowed red foxes to move their range further north over the last 70 years. Oh, do it again. That was amazing. Walking off into the mountains, beautiful. As red foxes move in, they threaten the survival of the native arctic foxes because they can outcompete them for food. So while the red fox flourishes in its new range, the arctic fox is being pushed out of its range by that same success. The fox had nothing to say. The white-tailed deer is another species that is taking advantage of warmer temperatures and an advancing tree line by moving further north. Historically, white-tailed deer, which are the most abundant wild ungulate in their range from North America all the way down to Northern South America, have made their homes in more temperate climates. The reason white-tailed deer avoid extreme cold is that below minus 17.7 degrees Celsius, they start to shiver to stay warm, which costs a lot of energy. If they aren't able to find adequate food to replenish the energy spent, it's just not worth it to live in temperatures that are consistently lower than that. With rising temperatures, however, they can move further north into the boreal forest. White-tailed deer are voracious eaters, gobbling up small plants and young trees. Their presence further north is great for them since it opens up even more feeding possibilities. But it could have a huge impact on the flora of the boreal forest. Along with the deer come the wolves, which spells disaster for the already threatened boreal caribou, who call that area home. This was the first herd of reindeer I ever saw. What impressed me the most was the sea of moving horns. As if that wasn't bad enough, white-tailed deer also carry deer ticks and a brainworm parasite that is harmless to them, but deadly to endemic moose and caribou. 
So while the white-tailed deer can't imagine their luck at having a whole new zone to comfortably invade, the consequences for the rest of the ecosystem are significant. Beavers are also moving further north into the Arctic as temperatures rise. The Alaskan beaver shows off his swimming skill. Come on in, the water's fine. It shouldn't come as a surprise that these animals have a big impact on their environment, since they literally engineer the habitats around them to suit their needs. It takes a good big dam, and you got to move quite a pile of dirt. Beavers will dam up waterways to create ponds for themselves. Usually, this honing of their habitat is beneficial to birds, fish, and insects, who take advantage of these new bodies of water. But when a beaver moves into the Arctic and creates a pond, the water starts to thaw the underlying permafrost, which in turn releases carbon from the soil into the water, creating the greenhouse gases, methane and carbon dioxide. So much like humans, while their engineering benefits themselves immensely, a beaver's building habit in the Arctic is actually accelerating climate change both locally and globally. Moving a bit further south now, Pacific salmon are also adapting to a warming climate by hatching earlier and earlier in the year. This in turn directly benefits the bald eagle populations that rely on the salmon run for food. Studies show that the earlier the salmon run, the more eggs a bald eagle will produce which means populations have the chance to boom in the face of a changing climate. Native to the southern United States, nine-banded armadillos have been consistently moving northward for over a century. But here's a boy who doesn't seem concerned. He isn't even going to take it home. They usually prefer warm and wet climates, but increasing temperatures have allowed them to expand their range upwards towards the northeast. If their advancement continues, they could be thriving as far north as New York City within a few decades. So while the idea of an armadillo exploring the streets of New York may be an adorable notion, not all creatures that are moving north are as welcome. Joe's case is complicated, one for a specialist. He has what we call a, a tick. Due to rising temperatures, ticks are also expanding their range north at a rate of about 35 to 55 kilometers per year. This introduces a whole new barrage of tick-borne illnesses to people in regions that would otherwise never have to worry about them. This includes the Lone Star Tick, which has become infamous for spreading a disease called Alpha-Gal Syndrome, a potentially life-threatening condition which makes the sufferer allergic to red meat. When it comes to benefiting from climate change, it all comes down to how quickly and easily a species can adapt to new conditions. While many amphibians will be affected negatively by rising temperatures, bullfrogs will likely be seen thriving. Bullfrogs are the largest of the American frogs. It's quite a trick to catch one, since they jump very quickly and sometimes make leaps of from 8 to 10 feet long. Not only are they tolerant to a broader range of temperatures, they also eat a wide variety of foods. Animals that aren't able to quickly start eating a new type of food when their preferred meal is no longer available are the ones who tend to fall apart in the face of change. Bullfrog reproduction isn't tied to a certain temperature or amount of precipitation, unlike other amphibians, so they aren't relying on the climate to give them clues about when to reproduce. And if that wasn't enough to keep them thriving, Bullfrogs are also less susceptible to infectious diseases than other amphibians. The oceans are also not immune to creatures booming due to warming waters. Black sea urchins, which are native to the Mediterranean Sea, have been found to tolerate a range of temperatures and even acidic water. This spells even greater success for these species in the face of ocean acidification, another byproduct of our climate crisis. High numbers of urchins are bad news for the local flora, since they gobble up everything. The open, sandy areas devoid of vegetation that they leave behind are even known as urchin barrens. And it's not even like we can eat our way out of this one. Unlike some of their delicious relatives, black sea urchins are completely inedible. Similarly, jellyfish are booming in the increasingly hot oceans, with more sightings than ever indicating their success. Research shows that this overabundance of jellyfish could actually aid in the climate crisis. 
Jellyfish accumulate carbon by feeding on smaller organisms that pull carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. After their relatively short life cycle, jellyfish will die and sink down, taking their loads of carbon with them to be locked away in the deep ocean, far from the surface. Alaskan glaciers like this one move slowly towards the sea. When they reach the sea, the tremendous pressure exerted by millions of tons of ice from the back causes them to crack and break with a noise of thunder. Some of the animals that are expanding their range are keystone species that are bringing positive effects to their ecosystems. The Canada lynx is one species that is benefiting from this northerly advancing tree line as a result of climate change. Since Canada lynx need the cover of trees to stalk their prey, their range is actually expanding north along with the trees, meaning that they are gaining access to more territory and more prey along with warming temperatures. This northward expansion of the lynx is especially important to them because they're struggling in vast areas of their southern range. The European lynx, for example, disappeared from Central Europe in 1850 and is just starting to make a comeback. Thankfully, rewilding projects are ongoing and populations in Germany are steadily increasing. Our friends at Planet Wild are supporting local scientists who monitor and study lynx populations and are returning orphaned lynx kittens to the wild. When our baby lynx was discovered in a raccoon trap, she was only six months old and still dependent on her mother. And even though she was rescued quickly, her mother could not be found anywhere, turning her into an orphan. On top of rehabbing adorable kittens, Planet Wild is supplying researchers with camera traps to check on the health of the local lynx population. Uh, this is the perfect picture. This is exactly what we want. So you can see the inner legs of the animal and uh, that's where the most spots are. The spots of a, of a lynx are very unique. Uh, they are like a fingerprint. We will be able to recognize it uh, after 10 years. Uh, the spots do not change. You can become a member of the Planet Wild community for as little as $6 a month and support animal or nature restoration projects all over the world. And the best part, you get to see your impact in a monthly video showing your contribution. From beehive fences that protect elephants, to owl rewilding projects, to planting edible forests, there's a lot of good work being done. Becoming a member is one of the easiest and most direct ways of supporting animal protection. We love what they're doing, and we want to see the Planet Wild community grow. So we're gifting the first month of a membership to the first 200 viewers who sign up using the code ANIMALOGIC. Use this QR code or click on the link in the description to become a member of this amazing community. If you like Animal Logic, you're going to love Planet Wild. So after looking at these species that are thriving despite climate change, you may be wondering if the planet is going to be okay after the human-driven climate crisis has snowballed out of control. Just because a species seems to be doing better now does not mean they'll survive when the whole ecosystem crashes and burns in the wake of global warming. As always, our focus remains on preventing the disaster before it happens, so that all species have a chance to live out their natural course. Our imagination, vision and foresight, and the organized knowledge of science. With these, we can keep the balance in our faith. We will hold the upper hand. So what should we talk about next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching. See ya.